Hello, Real Fans. It's Sierra, number 52 Real Fan. That's S E R A, the number sign 52 Real Fan. And welcome back to my G Scale layout. Today, we're going to be following a manifest freight with manned rear end helpers. Now, for those of you Rail fans that are familiar with railroad jargon, there is a difference between manned helpers and DPUs, or distributed power units. The difference between a manned helper or a DPU, or distributed power unit, is that in the case of a DPU locomotive or locomotives, these locomotives are generally placed on the rear end or sometimes the mid portion of the train and are controlled via remote control by the head end locomotive. A manned helper locomotive or locomotives are operated by a completely separate crew than the head end locomotive, meaning there is generally an engineer and a conductor on a manned helper locomotive that actually operate and control that locomotive's speed rather than in the case of a distributed power locomotive or DPU which is operated via remote control by the head-end locomotive engineer. Operating manned helpers or DPUs, distributed power units, in the model railroading world are very similar to that of the prototype railroads. Meaning that on a model railroad, a helper unit or distributed power unit can be remotely operated and consisted with the head end locomotives, meaning each locomotive is linked to the head-end locomotive and the head-end locomotive actually will control the speed of each locomotive in that consist. Generally, most model railroad radio control units can operate up to six locomotives in one consist. This can be done by placing all six locomotives at the head end of the train, or locomotives can actually be broken up and placed either in the mid portion or rear end of the train. Locomotive placement for a helper locomotive is dependent upon how heavy your train is and how long your train is. Each locomotive in a consist is linked to the remote control, which means the remote control has to be in the line of sight of each locomotive included in that consist. So for shorter trains, or in areas of your layout where you can see both ends of the trains, a DPU or distributed power unit linked to the head-end locomotive in the form of a consist may be a better choice for that particular train. However, if you have a long or heavy train or a curved layout, with locations where both ends of the train are not within a line of sight, then a manned helper is a better choice. Such is the case with this particular manifest train. This train is both long and extremely heavy 
based upon the live loads that are carried on this train, which consist of wood chips and lumber. So a manned helper was a better choice to assist in getting this train up and over the steep grades on this particular layout. So how does one operate a manned helper on a model railroad, do you ask? Well, just like the prototype railroads, instead of two crews, you need two separate remote controls. One remote control will operate the head end power, which could be a single locomotive or a consist. And the other remote control will operate the manned helper power, which can also be one locomotive or a consist of locomotives. In the case of this manifest train, a manned helper was a much better choice, both because the train was long and because it was extremely heavy. Placing a manned helper on the rear end of this train was much more beneficial than placing a DPU because of both the weight and the fact that there are several locations along this layout where the DPU would lose line of sight with the head end locomotive and or the control. This could obviously cause complications in your train. With that said, a manned helper can be much more challenging than that of a DPU because the speed of a DPU locomotive is controlled by the head end locomotive, whereas a manned helper locomotive is controlled by a completely separate remote control this means that the operator of the manned helper unit has to pay attention to the speed of the head end power unit so as to not cause your train to buckle or streamline during movements. It is often more beneficial to place a manned helper on the rear end of a train rather than the mid portion of the train. So let's discuss how this operation works on a model railroad. To get a train started, the rear end manned helpers will actually begin to start pushing the train before the head end power begins pulling the train. This ensures that slack is taken out of the rear end of the train so as when the head end locomotive or locomotives begin to pull there is less of a chance of streamlining the mid or rear portion of the train. Now once the train begins to move, in order to properly control the speed of the train as to prevent streamlining or buckling, the manned helper unit actually controls the speed of the train rather than the head end power until a cruising speed, so to speak, is set by the Hendon Power locomotive. So this means until the desired cruising speed of the train is decided, each time there is an increase in speed, the manned helper will actually take the lead in increasing the speed prior to the head end power. So once the train reaches its cruising speed, the manned helpers will actually remain at a speed slightly higher than that of the head end power as to control the slack in the train and again prevent string lining, especially on curvy track or lines with steep grades and curves. So for example, if the 
desired cruising speed is at 35% of the remote control power, the head-end locomotives will generally be at 35% and the rear-end locomotive power may be at anywhere between 38 and 40% depending on the length and the weight of your train. So the operator has to be cautious and actually watch the slack in the couplers in order to keep the train controlled. This is to ensure for safe operation during movements. Now when slowing or stopping your train, the operation will be the exact reverse, meaning the head-end power will actually control the reduction of the speed and the manned helper operators will follow in tow until the speed of your train is at zero. So for those of you model railroaders that are looking at operating manned helpers on your layouts, I hope this video has been helpful. Please be sure to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep on model railroading and keep on rail fanning. Thanks for watching.